Hi and welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz and in today's video I'm going to share how to finger knit the linen stitch. This is a really pretty stitch that gives the effect of woven fabric and we're going to be creating this look easily with our fingers. Now if you aren't familiar with finger knitting I would recommend that you check out my tutorial on how to finger knit as well as my video on my most frequently asked questions. Both of these are a great foundation and are full of tips and tricks to get you started. For this tutorial, I'm using the Bernat Blanket Big. This is a jumbo seven yarn made out of 100% polyester. This is machine and dryer safe. If you're wanting to work on a blanket, I'll add the information in the description box below as far as how many skeins you need. Typically for a three foot by four foot, you would need about five skeins of this yarn. And for a four by five foot, you would need about six. We're going to start with our foundation chain, and if you're trying to figure out a measurement for your project, I found about seven chains equaled one foot or 12 inches. So to begin, create a slip knot. We're going to take the yarn, wrap it around our fingers, pull the yarn through the middle, and tighten. This will count as one of your chains. I like to make mine roughly about two and a half to three inches. You want to go on the larger side here. This really helps to keep your blanket or your project straighter. When you're creating your chains, I would recommend that you go up to an odd number. This will ensure that your sides match and this will make more sense when we start working on the pattern. So for example, if you decide to work on a three foot by four foot blanket, I would start with the three foot, the width side, and that would be roughly 21 stitches or 21 chains. Now this is just an approximate number because you might be working with a different yarn brand or a different tension. So just practice this and see what works best for you. To create your foundation chain, just pull the yarn through your loops. That's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. To begin, we're just going to do a knit stitch in each one of these chains. To do the knit stitch, you're just going to pull the yarn through again, and that creates your knit stitch. That's number one. Just going into the top, pull the yarn through, and through. I would recommend again that you make these about two and a half to three inches high. This is particularly important with working with this linen stitch and you'll see why here soon. Just continue all the way across, creating your knit stitches. I'm just going to be referring to this process right here as knitting. When you reach the end, there is a loop here that you don't want to miss. Be sure to put a loop in there as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to do what I'm going to call two different stitches here. One is your knit stitch and the other one, let's just call it the wrap. When we're making the linen stitch, we're just going to be going back and forth with these two stitches, wrap, knit, wrap, knit, or knit, wrap, knit, wrap. This is what's going to give us our woven effect. So since we started with knit stitches all the way across, our next row is going to start with a wrap stitch. When I say wrap, all we're going to do is we're going to be wrapping the yarn around the front of the previous stitch. On the sides, it may feel a bit awkward at first, but all we're going to do is pull the yarn to the front of the stitch you just made, and that's going to be your wrap. After you've done a wrap stitch, then you're going to do a knit stitch. To do the knit stitch, you're just going to pull that yarn through to the back and knit it through or pull a loop through. When you do this, don't forget to make your loop about two and a half to three inches high. And the reason you want to do that is because you're going to be pulling the yarn to the front of it to do that wrap, and it does cover that loop, and it's hard to see if you make it too small. So we just finished a knit stitch, so now we're going to do a wrap. So bringing the yarn back to the front, pull the yarn in front and wrap it across that knit stitch, and then pull it back behind because we're going to do the knit stitch next. So it's wrap, knit, wrap, knit, wrap, knit, wrap. And as you can see by doing that with an odd number, you'll always start and finish with the same kind of stitch. So we just finished a wrap. We've got the yarn in the back to pull it through to create
create our knit stitch. One of the biggest concerns or comments I get is that your blankets are expanding on you. They're starting out narrow and then they're getting too wide. And this is all about tension. And one of the things that I found that helped the most with this is making sure that your loops stay close together as you're working. This little bar of yarn in between, you don't want that to grow too big. One way to help with this is to work on a flat surface, bed, floor, on a table like this. Try to avoid keeping it on your lap. I know it's really comfortable to sit with it working on your lap, but you will find that it has a tendency to grow on you if you do that. So we just did a knit stitch, making sure that I keep my loops close together. I'm wrapping, pulling the yarn to the back, to finish with a knit stitch. And when you reach the end, you're going to be doing a wrap. And it seems a little bit more tricky than it is. You're just simply going to bring the yarn to the front, make sure that loop is nice and close to the previous one, and wrap. Just pull it forward. Now you're ready for the next row. Since we finished with a wrap, on the next row you want to do a knit. So all you're going to do is pull that yarn to the back and pull the yarn through. And now we're ready to wrap again, making sure your loops are close together. Pull that yarn forward and wrap that loop. Next is a knit. One thing that you can do that really helps me is just put your finger into that loop. That just helps you control the tension a little bit more. And then pull that loop through to knit. Keep those loops nice and close together as you're working. You want to keep some tension here. You want to keep this as tight as possible. Not like strangling your yarn, but just keep it tucked in nice and close together. And then get ready to do your knit. Wrap. As you can see, I got a little short there, so it's going to be hard to find. Be careful about that. And then finally, knit to finish. And that's it, that's all you're going to do, row after row, just repeating this sequence until you've finished your project. Finished with a knit, start with a wrap, and just continue on. And you're going to find that this is so relaxing. I really enjoy this stitch. When you come to the end of the blanket and you want to finish, you want to do your very last row as knit stitches again. And you want to make your loops a little bit longer, closer to the three inch height, or even a little bit longer than that because you're going to be looping them into each other to fasten off. So I'm just going to knit my way across. I finished on a wrap, so I'm going to knit in each loop across. Now to fasten off, we're just going to feed these loops into each other until we get to the tail. To do that, we're just going to feed the yarn through and pull. Go in and pull through. Go in, pull through. Go in, pull through. Go in. Pull through, go in, and pull through. And then at this point, now I do still have a long piece of yarn here, so I can't show you exactly, but you'll just take the remainder of your yarn and pull it through to secure with a knot. To see that in more detail, I would recommend that you watch my finger knitting video that shows you how to do that, as well as how to join or add new balls of yarn. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It always means the world to me when you do that. Let me know in the comments if you're going to be trying this linen stitch, or if you have any requests for other stitches or finger knit videos.